back with Hook and Timber Outdoors here. Today we're going to be doing a special edition fly tying session. We're going to be tying a lefty's deceiver. Um, we're actually going to be honoring Lefty Cray who just passed away yesterday which was Wednesday the 14th. Um, today is actually Thursday the 15th and it's probably, I actually created this video on Wednesday but I'm going to upload it on Thursday so not to um, confuse you or anything. He actually passed away yesterday. I'm sure most of you have already heard. He was one of the very popular man in the world of fly fishing as well as fly tying. He was the author to, I think I read approximately 20 books, maybe more, um, somewhere along those lines. He did a lot of saltwater patterns, um, a lot of knots, a lot of different books with a lot of great and useful information. Um, before we go ahead and get started with the fly tying behind the vise, I just kind of wanted to do a little bit of um, fun facts for you. Um, as far as Lefty goes, he was a very um, influential man, so he was, I read a lot of his stuff, and he has a lot of words of wisdom, so if you have not, um, hope to goodness that you've actually heard of Lefty Cray, but if you have not, I hope that you actually take a time, take your time, and dig into a little bit of his stuff, maybe purchase one of his books, and really see what he had to say. He had a lot of 50 plus years, or whatever it was, of, um, fly fishing under his belt. I think it was way more than that, actually, um, but with that said, the first thing I wanted to share was, um, of course, his world-famous pattern, the Lefty's Deceiver. Um, that's what we're going to be honoring and tying one of those behind the vise. But it's actually intended for striped bass. I don't know if anyone knew that, but it was definitely intended for striped bass whenever he created this pattern. So you got saltwater and freshwater that it's used for. Saltwater is definitely one of the uh, biggest flies that it's known for, but it was really a universal um, streamer pattern, so don't be afraid to use it in freshwater, in the lakes, and even in the rivers for its bass, stripers, um, pike, or walleye, or browns, rainbows, brook, anything. So it's very, very universal. Second thing, what which was I thought was extremely cool, in 1991, the United States Postal Service actually honored him and created a stamp since he had his um, famous fly uh, published, so to speak, which was the Lefty's Deceiver. So they created a stamp personally for him. And, of course, once I heard that, I was like, what? This is crazy. So I had to actually go online and see if this was... Not true, but see if there was any still more, any more out there. Well, lo and behold, I did find a few. So, if anyone wants to be super nice, maybe we can do a swap or something. I'll tie you up some flies. I will I can give you a t-shirt. Heck, I'm, if you want a sticker, I may can throw in a sticker. But I think I looked on eBay. I think they're only like $10 or so. That was the going rate, so to speak. It fluctuated maybe a little bit more than that. So if you want to do a swap, you want to get one of those, say, hey, if you want some flies, I'll tie up some flies, throw in a sticker or something. Um, shoot me a message, find me on Facebook, send me a message, something along those lines. We can definitely work something out. But the last thing, which I thought was the coolest, was that he, um, I read on IGFA, this is where I got this information on, which is the International Game, and, or Game Fish Association. In 1964, whenever he was living in Florida at the time, he was really tried to adapt the catch and release aspect of fly fishing and fishing in general to all the guides out there. So I thought that was really cool and he received a lot of uh, kickback or pushback at first and uh, not everyone really wanted to do it but once he explained that catch and release is only beneficial. Um, you can only keep so many before you start to see your numbers deplete over time and catch and release actually improves the quality and the quantity of your fishing. So over a period of time they finally started to adapt that and they wound up seeing the fishing start to just increase and go off the charts. So I thought that was really cool and that's something I'm really big on is catch and release. I know that I don't eat fish in particular but I just like catch and release. It's I like seeing numbers grow. I, I want someone else to catch that same fish that I caught. So that's why um, I think we're very much so alike. And he's always been one of the people that I've um, read a lot of his information over the years. So he's always, or he is, even though he may not know me, of course, but he um, definitely helped me get into my passion for fly fishing with the help and use of his knowledge with all of his books and all of it, everything that he's 
um, done over the course of his life. So if you guys want to stay tuned, we're going to go ahead and hop over to the vice. We're going to tie Lefty's famous pattern, the Lefty's Deceiver. All right, so we're going to be uh, getting the Lefty's Deceiver going on. I have a Mustad R73-9671 2XL size 6 hook. Um, the only way I would tie these on a saltwater hook so I could make this a little bit more universal, but I've looked up and down for my saltwater flies, or hooks, and for whatever reason I can't find them. I know they're in here somewhere and I probably already overlooked them, but I'm not going to look anymore. So we got some white thread on, we're just going to go ahead and start, wrap all the way back down. We're going to take some schloppen and white. This is five to seven inches. That's what this looks like. We're going to take four feathers. Okay, so I got my four schloppen feathers and I'm going to tie them in. I'm actually going to build just a little bit of a base so they have something to grip on. I'm going to place them on there. Just like that. And that's not going anywhere. We're going to take two strands, one on either side of Mirage, Tinsel, and Opal. And then tie this one in on my side of the hook shank. Now we're going to take some crystal flash and pearl. We're going to cut off about three strands for either side. Alright, so now that we have that taken care of, we want to pull these fibers back just to make sure that they are the correct length. So the tinsel and the crystal flash needs to be barely sticking past the tail. You don't want anything too crazy. So I'm going to get those aligned and snip it right about half an inch past the tail. I'm going to use some Ice Dub and UV Pearl just to coat this section of the fly, just the middle, just so it doesn't go... Um, some people I've seen use different materials. I just want to leave this coated in something just so it looks good underneath the water. Because sometimes, occasionally, once we put some uh, bucktail on this at the very top of the fly towards the head, it will, uh, you'll get a couple spots where you can see through and I just don't want white thread. I want a little bit of white and a little bit of flash or something just so it looks good underneath the water. Alright, so now we're going to take some buckskin which is this is the tail and we're gonna take off a, a decent amount nothing too crazy I'll get it in the camera in just a moment I'm just finding what I like
We're going to take about this much right here. We're going to take it with our right hand on the butt section and pull some of those fibers that aren't in place good. Take it about halfway down or maybe a third of the way down from the butt section and take with your right hand and pull some of those extra small fibers that get trapped in there or even the ones that aren't in there at all. Now we can take it in our left hand. You want to have maybe about a quarter of an inch. I've got curved scissors here as you can tell but you want to take and cut a little place like this at an angle so you get a nice tie down on your fly. Now whenever we do this we want to place it on this side closest to the camera so we're going to tie we're going to tie on this side of the camera my side of the camera and then one on top So that fanned out perfectly on that side. Next we're going to take some more bucktail and do the same thing for my side of the camera. Same thing, take it with your right hand at the butt section and just pull some of these fibers that get aren't locked in place and switch over and pull some from the butt section that aren't in place. So I switched to um, 210 UTC thread, and this is chartreuse color, because the next step, I went finished off with my white, and I switched over to chartreuse. I'm going to use the chartreuse bucktail now. I'm going to find some nice, long, medium to long size fibers that I like. Do an angle cut as well. Place it up on top. I'm just building a head for it now. So I finally got my head built. Now we're going to turn the fly upside down. We're going to take some red crystal flash and we're going to take 
probably about four or so. Tie it right up underneath the head. Just like so. And we're going to double this over. I'm going to get one or two more right up here. And we're going to double this over. We can take our whip finish tool and whip finish. Oops. You want to take the red crystal flash. Pull it back, and you want to cut it right at the bend of the hook. And the final step is we're going to take a little bit of uh, loon. UV clear finish. I had to make sure I had the thin version. Once we have what we like, we can take our UV light and begin to cure it. Some people like putting eyes on these. I didn't do this one in particular with eyes. Um, I don't have the right size eyes, number one. The really small eyes to put on this. A lot of people will take um, some paint or some like nail polish stuff, dab some eyes on there and coat it with the UV resin and um, hit it with the UV light. That way you can um, have some solid eyes that will be durable. Um, I just didn't do it. I think that um, this is a solid representation of Lefty's Fly, one that he created uh, maybe back in the day. So, all right. Well, I appreciate everyone's time watching this video. This is your Lefty's Deceiver. This is a classic fly, a perfect saltwater pattern, or even a lake, river, freshwater pattern. I appreciate everyone's time watching this video, and if you liked what you saw, hopefully you will like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, make sure you check us out on Facebook. We're at facebook.com. Make sure you search us in the search engine, Hook and Timber Outdoors. I'll put a link in the description box to make it a little bit easier for you guys. But other than that, I appreciate everyone's time. Hope everyone has a wonderful day.